Very, very, very good. And it looks like, I mean, the weather is extremely well in, in Finland, the greater Helsinki summer. area at the moment. It's really amazing. It's like summer again. Yeah. In end of September. Yeah. Mm. And what I heard from uh, Switzerland is that they are having a, like our winter weather. It's raining, it, it has been forecast, really? it's snow. Tata and all that opposite. kind of things. We, we will get snow. We will get snow. Soon or later. <laughs> yeah, soon or later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I like this because we are plus 20 in the end of September and it's like not supposed to be like this. I'm a bit mm -hmm. worried about climate change here. Mm, exactly. This yeah, is yeah. not a very Finnish autumn weather. Yeah, but it's the same thing. I mean, in the beginning of the year, we were not supposed to be at homes for six months. Yeah. So we are living interesting times at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, everyone who is probably already online on the uh, Zoom and then on Facebook, just for your information, that we will be starting the uh, Phenomal Teacher Phenomenal Teacher Education from Finland webinar uh, as informed uh, within two minutes. So stay tuned. I am very, very convinced that this will be an extremely interesting information that three of our distinguished guest speakers, uh, the professors from the University of Helsinki will be sharing with us. So bear with us a few minutes just to ensure that everyone uh, will have a fair chance to log in on time. Mm. Hmm. It's eight o'clock, yes. Yeah, yes. 3 p.m. here, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 3 p.m. And now, let us open the webinar here. So one minute or 30 seconds and off we go or 15 seconds and counting. Maybe it is three o'clock already. I would like to Welcome all of you all over the world to this joint webinar uh, with HY Plus and University of Helsinki and World Didac uh, addressing the phenomenal teacher education from Finland. I will be uh, one of the two hosts for this webinar today. Uh, and Kimmo Kerpioki from HY Plus will be the... Hello. Second one, and you, you will uh, hear the introduction from Kimmo in a few uh, minutes. So let us start. Just quickly introducing the University of uh, Helsinki Center for Continuing Education, or HY+, as we call them. Uh, you can see a, a quick boilerplate and the introduction, what HY+, is doing. And then on this web webinar uh, out from the University of Helsinki, we are focusing only and mainly on the Faculty of Educational Sciences. And you will hear a lot more from our uh, guest speakers today about the uh, phenomenal teacher education from Finland. Let me very quickly uh, introduce our three speakers, namely Kirsti Lonka, Jari Lavonen and Markus Talvio. And Kirsti will be uh, uh, talking about the phenomenal teacher education from Finland or learning from Finland. Jari will be focusing on the recent trends in science education. And finally, uh, Markus uh, will be uh, addressing the importance of social and emotional learning or SEL as we call it. Uh, but I will let Kirsti, Jari and Markus to uh, introduce and go through uh, those topics in greater details. 
but I can guarantee you that this will be extremely interesting topic for all of you. Then introducing uh, myself as the one of the hosts for today's webinar. So my name is Juha Merinen and I am the member of the Council or Board of Directors, if you may, uh, of World Didact Association. And together with me uh, here is Kimmo Kerpioki, who is the CEO of HY+. Would you, Kimmo, like to uh, say a few words? Kimmo will be online uh, in the uh, more end part of this webinar. So yeah, I, uh, hello to everybody. Nice to get you all at this webinar. And I will explain a little bit more in end of the webinar about HY+, and also a couple of words about myself. But I'm CEO of HY+, and being co-host with Juha on, on this webinar session. Thank you very much, Kimmo. And about World Tidak, to make a long story short, uh, two key messages. We are where education comes together, and World Tidak is the only global trade association for the educational resources industry. And on your right hand side, you see uh, two words, namely future talk. Uh, with a uh, lot more uh, blue uh, balloons, so to speak. And you will get uh, more information uh, in the end of this webinar, what is Future Talk all about? And this is something that you may probably want to join also uh, in the beginning of uh, November, but I will get back on that one a bit later on. Then, uh, just before we start, uh, please notice that, that this webinar will be recorded and this will be uploaded to YouTube afterwards. So you will have a very good chance to uh, listen and go through all the key messages afterwards also. And as we are now on Zoom, just for everyone's information, we are streaming this live on Facebook as we speak. I am quite sure that there will be, uh, in addition to those already, uh, those questions that were sent to us uh, beforehand, there will be probably a lot of other questions to our keynote speaker. So please use the chat uh, feature on the Zoom. And when, and hopefully, so let's make this really global. So please capitalize on the uh, power of uh, social media. And if you do that, we would highly appreciate if you would use these hashtags for your social media communication. And my part at the moment uh, here is uh, coming to end. And my last uh, message to you is that Please do enjoy our keynote speakers. I guarantee that you will be uh, positively, if not surprised, but at least pleased that you uh, decided to join us. So let me extremely and warmly welcome our first speaker, uh, Dr. Kirsti Lonka from the uh, University of Helsinki and the Faculty of Educational uh, Psychology. Please, Kirsti, the stage is yours. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kirsti Lunka, professor at the University of Helsinki, and I'm really excited to be here. Um, I saw people from Toronto, China, uh, Argentina, Russia, everywhere. And that's so heartwarming because we cannot travel anywhere now. So at least we can be in contact online and discuss these very important uh, things. Well, my presentation is, is about future, where we are going next. And these are not finished issues. These are global issues. In the next slide, I have a picture um, of um, my latest book. The next slide, can you change? Yes. 
Uh, it was published in 2018, my first kind of popular book in English. Usually I just write very boring scientific articles in, and lots of books in Finnish. But Korean and Spanish translations have come out and Russian and Chinese are coming out soon. So I hope that in the future you're able to read this book by, uh, in your own language. And in the next slide there is a picture of um, the Spanish version, which is actually Latin American version. And I'm so happy about that. I have had webinars for people in Latin America and enjoyed uh, communicating with people from different parts of the world. In the next slide, I talk about a history of Finland, but of course we are looking for the future. But every time you talk about education, you talk about societal system. So our system was actually created in 1860s, 150 years ago, when Finland was one of the poorest countries in the world. We became independent in 1917, and still the country was quite poor. I'm telling about that in my book too. Uh, but still we wanted to invest in school. And literacy has been always high in Finland. Funny thing was that um, since the very old times, you couldn't get married without being able to read. So that actually the priest tested your reading ability that you could read the, uh, the Bible and, and then you got licensed to marry. So I think that was a smart move. And, and also our language is a bit different. It's a very phonemic language, easy to learn how to spell. So in the next slide, I'm looking at where we are going next. We have a long history and all the building blocks of our education have been set 450 years ago, but now we are living a very global world and very unpredictable. So we need very creative and active citizens to participate in the society. What we are doing in Finland, we are changing our physical spaces, redesigning schools, social settings are changing. This is a totally new environment for us to communicate. Uh, using new technologies, but we have a problem, a global problem. All over the world, school engagement is declining over years in the middle school. And it's really important um, to engage our students. Finland introduced a new curriculum 2016 and also a reform of teacher education. Professor Lavonen was the president of this uh, teacher education reform a group with 100 colleagues. So we're really working hard to constantly renew our practices. In the next slide, uh, there are some latest developments. For instance, uh, interdisciplinary projects were introduced. I talk about phenomenon-based learning because that's the one that we've applied with in my program for 15 years already. Also, seven broad-based 21st century skills or competencies. Of course, social digital revolution, so that we are living it now. And those who are ready with this are coping better during this terrible pandemic, because people already have some resources how to cope with it. Coding, AI, robotics, STEAM, so-called maker culture, where children, instead of uh, gaming, are designing games or instead of playing with robots, they are designing robots. And things that are not only made by us, but also designed by us. And this is very important for many countries to have this kind of creative attitude towards schools and learning. So external world is coming to our schools and also schools are going outdoors, which is a good idea when you cannot socialize uh, with others indoors at the moment in many countries due, due to lockdowns. In the next slide, I present very briefly the Finnish 21st century skills. On my website, uh, there is a tool, the road to 21st century competencies. It's an open source tool. There you can look more precisely all these uh, 21st century skills and a professor Lavonen is going to talk about how they are put in practice in science education. But the main skill is thinking skills and learning how to learn. Uh, another thing is multiliteracy, how we interact also not only face to face but also 
uh, in technology mediated environments. What is a proper tweet? How to communicate in a constructive ways? How to create peace rather than war by using social medias? There we need cultural competencies, ability to social and emotional learning, which is the topic of, of Dr. Marcus Stalvio, but also working life skills, entrepreneurship, uh, and of course, ICT skills are important. And there are also in different parts of the world, there are young people who don't even know how to take care of themselves and manage their everyday life. So all these skills are essential, not only for working life, but for life inside and outside school. In the next slide, I just briefly talk about phenomenon-based learning because there are so many people who've been asking about, um, about that for me. Uh, Phenomenon-based learning is a form of inter interdisciplinary projects that are mentioned in our new national curriculum. We are not giving up subject matter-based learning. Uh, instead, we are introducing one or two uh, interdisciplinary projects per year in the new Finnish curriculum. And phenomenon-based learning starts from a larger uh, phenomenon like life and death, something that interests students. It may integrate various school subjects, not only academic subjects, natural sciences, humanities, but also sports, handicrafts, arts, music, and all these mandatory subjects in Finnish curriculum. It's a bit similar to STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics that Professor Lavonen is going to talk about. In the next slide, uh, there is a nice picture. We do a lot of outdoor uh, working now ever more than ever because we, we, have, we cannot go to the same classroom. But with uh, phenomenon-based learning, PHBL as I abbreviated, we make the use of natural curiosity of children and young people. They do have their own interests. We just need to trigger them. Also, this is the best way for me to integrate uh, the important 21st century skills. It's difficult if you are slicing everything into different subjects, uh, how to integrate uh, the 21st century competencies. So the phenomena are studied in a holistic way, if possible, in the real authentic context. So for instance, forest may be a theme of a whole school, and in that school, uh, the students in each class or in, group, in different groups come up with different phenomena that are of interest in their uh, project related to forest. They go outdoors, they make inquiries, it's close to inquiry-based learning in science, and they also create their own working theories and test them. And the phenomenon they study can be energy, sustainable future, oxygen, whatever they want to do, or animals, or trees, or water, all these kinds of phenomena. In the next slide, uh, I've been focusing on this slide because I needed to quite quickly go through these main things that we have, new curriculum and, and all this. But I have this a bit playful, a uh, list of seven miracles of Finnish schools that people from different parts of the world have been most fascinated. Uh, when we look at the PISA data, um, we see that in many countries, um, people spend much more money in education, but get less good results. Um, uh, for instance, I think Norway puts three times more money in, in schools than we do. But we have always thought that when we, are do we don't have so much money, we need a lot of creativity. What is very interesting is the second part. We have short school days, long holidays, autonomous, well-trained teachers. They have all master degrees. Otherwise, you cannot teach, basically, uh, in pedagogy, pedagogical training. And we get as good results as those children who spend 12-hour days in East Asia. So I guess the effectiveness ratio is quite good. Playful learning until the age of seven, 
So it means that our early childhood education is the cornerstone of our system. Uh, the main way of learning is free play, very much outdoors. Uh, and still uh, students learn, some spontaneously learn to read when they are five years old, but everybody then learns to read and write when they are seven. And still the results are quite good. The best in 2015 PISA were um, Singapore, Japan, Estonia, Taiwan and Finland. Taiwan and Finland being about the same. Uh, so we get good results in science, even though arts, music, handicrafts, sports and home economy, that's like cooking, making food and so on, they are all mandatory school subjects. So many people think we are wasting time uh, with these things, but we know from the brain research that all this stimulates your brain and helps your learning. And in the same classroom, you may have refugees, special needs students, children from all kinds of social economic status. So our classrooms are very inclusive. There are no private school. In Finland, it's kind of illegal. It's illegal to take money um, from school children. So everybody's having the same comprehensive school from the age uh, seven to 15. And professors' children, uh, and the cleaning lady of the university, her children go to the same school and even in the same class. And also refugees from Syria and other countries who come and don't even know Finnish language or even English. And our teachers really need to be creative um, to integrate everybody. I know Canada is very good, <laughs> good at this. And some other countries who are much better in multicultural, intercultural issues, but still, um, it is challenging. What I like most when I look different research reports by OECD is that Finns appear to be the only country in the world where teenagers are among top five in both science learning and life satisfaction. I saw first one in life satisfaction was Costa Rica or some Latin American countries and then Finland they are among the best five in life satisfaction. But many countries that do well academically, uh, their life satisfaction of young people is very poor. It means that they don't have life outside school. And we want our children to be happy and well-being is important. We have problems. This is not a fairy tale. 2016, we started to do the digital leap, fortunately, because Corona, we didn't know anything about Corona then. School funding were cut by the government. Refugee crisis exploded. We introduced a new national curriculum and we are still struggling with all these challenges. But in the end, um, I will um, um, tell you about what we have been done, what we have been doing for you in collaboration with HI Plus. In my last slide, in the next slide, I introduced this program, uh, Phenomenal Teacher Training. Actually, our teacher students at our university are using the same materials and we want to share them with other people in other countries as well, because I believe that everybody in the world uh, is entitled for the best possible teacher education. So I've made lots of videos and then there are going to be webinars, workshops, uh, collaborative learning, reflections, new kinds of teaching practices. And my favorite course is what I do with our international students and my own uh, future teachers in Finland is training student engaging learning practices, modern educational practices from Finland, maximizing the number of interested and motivated students who are truly engaged in learning. We want to make Finland a country where people love learning and not just achieving. So this was my last slide and Kimo is probably going to tell you more about the program. Thank you very much for your interest. Thank you, Kirsti, very much for your in, in, in information. And we we be following extremely active chat and quest questions uh, all over the planet, so to speak. So if you would kindly <laughs> go through at least some of those, there are a lot of 
very, very good uh, and argumented questions, uh, which you may find quite interesting uh, to reply even, even now. But to uh, all the attendees on this uh, web web webinar, we will be getting back to your questions and so on. So please let those fly in, so to speak. And when Yari is now uh, uh, starting to share his screen, uh, it's better that you actually do. I had a very, very good PowerPoint slide on you, introducing you as the second of our guest speakers, but I will let you do it on my behalf. And <laughs> just a quick thing, uh, all of you will get these presentations uh, afterwards, uh, together with most likely so, uh, some links and stuff like that. So just focus on the uh, listening, the key messages, and you will get the presentations afterwards from the World Direct. But now, please, Yari, uh, share us uh, with your topic of how the learning of 21st century competencies uh, are emphasized in science, especially on the teacher education. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. I, I, I made my start my presentation a little bit early, but anyway, so it's good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, even good night. So it's great to, to meet you here online in Zoom. So uh, I, I would like to emphasize the seventh point Kirsti was introducing us that we are looking for challenges. I think that is very important in so-called high performing system. We are always looking what we can make better. And now I'm happy to introduce some key ideas related to make progress in science education. And it is actually quite close to what we are doing in science teach education also. So both views are present here. So my first question, what is new in curriculum? So Kirsti already mentioned that we have a new curriculum for basic education and, and upper secondary education. So we have reduced the number of concepts and we are focusing to so-called so uh, disciplinary core ideas or the core, the core concepts, what are important, explanatory, generative and relevant. So a lot of uh, load has been reduced in order to have more time for engaging students in scientific practices and engineering practices in the context of STEM education. So the students are following the similar procedures than scientists and engineering are making in their daily work. So this is one way of contextualizing science education and so the relevance of the education. Students active role in knowledge building, collaboration are important and emphasized in the curriculum. And also the integration of transversal competencies as Kirsti already emphasized. So what, what is the core of transversal competencies? So the description, how we do it in Finnish curriculum, it is quite broad view and it's very difficult to summarize in one slide. So I take the latest idea from OECD. So the basic competencies, know what, know how. So not only the concepts or ideas, but also how we work with them and, and, and how, how they are created creative and critical thinking, and also this learning to learn competence. And, and behavior and social skills, actually this is something Kirsty already emphasized a lot in her talk. And from the point of science education, I can pick up from this nice circle, we already seen in the previous presentation, the literacy, especially the ICT competence, inquiry orientation are basic competencies, critical, creative, learning to learn thinking are those left hand or right hand side things and then interaction communication and self-concept, self-efficacy, they are important aims in science education. So we have wrote about uh, change or renewal of curriculum in Finnish and United States context quite recently with my research colleagues Barbara Schneider, Joel Kratzik and Katarina Salmeraro quite recently we published a book about learning science and this is quite close what I am talking here. 
So a practical approach for implementing the new ideas in science education and including those transversal competencies is the project-based learning. Kirsti is willing to talk about phenomenal learning. So the origins of phenomenal and project-based learning are coming from the learning science. So in my, maybe Kirsti don't agree, but in my opinion, they are pretty close to each other, but we call it for historical reasons and, and in the science education context like project-based learning. So the driving question, which is conceptual, contextualizing learning is important. Students learning, knowledge building approach, knowledge practice approach, collaboration, and, and working around artifacts. This is very important. Students are creating. In project, it's important to create something. So they are creating scientific models. They are creating data sets. They are creating concept maps. They are discussing and collaborating, doing like scientists, they learn it. And of course, the role of a well-educated teacher who has him or herself a master level education, his role in scaffolding is really important in project-based learning. Um, I give you an example of a teaching module we developed with teachers. It's, it's always in Finland the researchers are collaborating. We, we, we call it research practice partnership. So we are doing things together. We are in the same line. We have same aims for making good life and progress for students. So together with teachers, we develop a kind of basic <laughs> physics issue is the mechanics. So the new type of learning mechanics in the frame of the curriculum and integration of the transversal competencies. So the motion relationship among the force and acceleration and, and things like that were important and the scientific and engineering practices. So the driving question, why are the objects falling sometimes at the same time, sometimes different time? contextualizing is important. There are, the world is full of different kind of movement and they are supporting students to ask questions, relevant questions they can use for making inquiry about the phenomena, in this case the movement. And then asking question is something really, actually it doesn't look so <laughs> exciting. So students are just, sorry, students are just collaborating, making notes, collecting ideas, and teacher is scaffolding. So the, it's very short clip, but anyway, you see the student's active role in thinking what might be the good questions, looking for an answer. And after having those questions in mind and in at paper or in the learning environment, they communicate the questions. They discuss about the question, what might be relevant questions to look an answer. And here you can see how these ladies are looking an answer to the classifying movements. What kind of movements happen around us? So it's quite simple. <laughs> Analyzing data together, the way it's starting the analyzing, looking for the measurements, communicating the information, it's really crucial communicate and share ideas in the project-based learning. And then we have been, Kirsti mentioned that the engagement interest is, is low in, in countries like Finland, in, in high achieving countries quite often. So we have made research on student engagement and we have used mobile phones asking students in a moment to, to answer based on feeling, what is the challenge they meet, what are the skills related to the challenge, and what is, how, how interesting is the activity. If this challenge skill and interest is high, then we say that students are in optimal learning moment, 
and, and they are really engaged in learning. So it's important to know if they are planning something new to the classrooms, how it is working. So the measurement of engagement is really important in the situation. Here is some preliminary data. So uh, basically about 15% of the situation randomly selected are engaging. But when students are asking questions or developing models, working around artifacts, they are much more engaging than other situations in science class. This kind of data we have actually collected also from United States and Chile, and we have recognized a similar tendency in the different countries. And of course, teachers are interested. Okay, engagement is fine, but are the students really learning? So the learning outcomes are also interesting for us. So we have developed together with teachers and researchers a questionnaire measuring the student uh, learning outcomes. This is an example. Uh, students should have a look for the video clips where the children are going downhill. So we have snow is <laughs> soon coming to Finland and we can enjoy the, the snow activities. So what might be the relevant questions to ask about this phenomena? So we have recognized that in this kind of pre-test, post uh, control group, uh, experiment group setting, the learning is quite similar in the field of conceptual knowledge. But in the field of uh, procedural knowledge, we can see that those who are doing project-based learning, they are better learning the procedural knowledge. That is actually emphasized even more in our curriculum than just concept. Or, uh, or we can maybe say that concepts and procedures are together, they are not separate. So my final slide, project-based learning according to the curriculum, emphasizing the transversal competencies, it's the way how to implement the new ideas to the classroom. We have a lot of evidence that is supporting aid engagement and also evidence that it is supportive for learning. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Yari. And let me now go. Okay, you are no here. Let's now take the uh, third perspective on our today's uh, theme, uh, and well, warmly welcoming uh, Dr. Markus Talvio. Uh, talk about the importance of social and emotional learning. And once again, the floor is yours, Markus. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I will share my slides here. All right, now you probably see uh, the topic once more, the importance of social and emotional learning. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm so pleased to have this great opportunity to be here and, and uh, share these thoughts and ideas with you. Um, my topic is related to something that um, has been introduced only uh, quite recently. And, and uh, Many people don't really know what is social and emotional learning and how how important it is when we when we learn new things. So my topic is about that. Mm -hmm. Next slide. A minute. I think I need to stop sharing and, and try to open it again. Just a minute. Sometimes it happens that the yeah, is yeah. not always our friend. <laughs> no Let's need try to, again. No need to rush when okay. you are ready. Yeah. Please continue, Marcus. Thank you so much. I just try to. All right. Now it works. So, um, uh, Professor Humphrey from the University of Manchester already has said that uh, social and emotional learning has perhaps become the dominant orthodoxy in education. 
uh, worldwide. And yes, it is true that in Finland, for example, we have introduced our new curriculum a couple of years ago, and it stresses a lot of 21st century skills and similar uh, things uh, as uh, social and emotional learning. And in United States, we know that lawmakers, they have introduced several bills to promote social and emotional learning. And uh, when I looked at uh, curricula, national core curricula in, in, in um, Asia, I realized that in many Asian countries and also in Australia and in Canada, uh, there's a lot of uh, things related to social and emotional learning. And once more, what is, what is social and emotional learning? Uh, if you look at this um, uh, figure, you, you see five elements there, self-awareness. So it means that, that it is important when we learn, we are quite aware uh, what we have in our inner reality. What are our strengths? What are our limitations? And what kind of emotions we are having at the moment, etc. Another aspect is that we need to know how we manage all those things, how we manage with our emotions to, to, to be able to learn better. Uh, how can we um, kind um, use our strengths and uh, how we can uh, improve our things? And then social awareness, it's again a little bit like. Uh, understanding that we are important for other for other people we are we are not alone here relationship skills it means that we uh, are forming positive relationship that we can make friends and we can uh, you know uh, good uh, be a good team member for example and finally uh, we always need to make decisions together when we work together with other people uh, the fifth element is about how we can make ethical choices for example and the question is that yes they sound very important those elements are very important maybe everybody could agree that but what should we do what are the skills that will be helpful what are the skills that teachers uh, and, and their students uh, can learn uh, so that these elements would become even uh, even stronger first uh, active listening is one of the things that are uh, that is important and uh, active listening is one of thomas gordon's uh, uh, skills if you look at teacher effectiveness training by Thomas Gordon, you will become aware of all these, uh, these um, skills and you can learn them uh, from, from uh, his books. Another thing is so-called iMessages uh, that he introduces in his books and in his courses. They uh, improve self-management and uh, when we talk about roadblocks roadblocks are skills uh, or <laughs> roadblocks are problems uh, between interaction and uh, when i can avoid roadblocks then that's one of the skills here again listening skills uh, it's very important that when we learn things uh, to be able to learn, we listen a lot. That's very important thing. And uh, and here you see all these elements that I already have taught, told you, except this both win method, which is a great method when we try to uh, like uh, solve problems that we have or or um, handle some collisions that we might have. So we kind of uh, have tools how we can improve those five social and emotional learning elements. 
maybe you might ask why is social and emotional learning important at school? Why is it important at school? Well, first of all, we know that it improves academic performance significantly. And we also know that it increases motivation, sense of participation, autonomy, and overall well being. I think if we can help students to experience those things, that's very important. And here you see, like, the um, the procedure, how everything goes. So if a student uh, feels that the learning environment is safe, caring, well managed, and that uh, and, and he or she feels that uh, uh, she is part of it, uh, it um, gives you uh, more attachment to school. And individually, when students uh, become more self-aware, social aware, and all these elements that I just told you, uh, they produce less risky behavior and more assets and positive development. And as you see, at the end, the school's task is, is to take care of the academic performance and success. And that's what social and emotional learning does. It, it, it uh, produces better academic performance and success in school and life. So that's why I think it's important that school needs to do that. And, and um, why is it so important at the moment today? We know that uh, technology, as we, as we heard from both from uh, Professor Longa and Professor Lavonen, we, uh, we, we may agree that technology and learning has grown rapidly in all over the world. And people probably thought before that when we have computers in between us, uh, there's not so much need for uh, social interaction or social interaction skills. But actually, it's the other way around. We, uh, we need more those skills when we need to, uh, when we communicate through uh, computers or and also another thing is that uh, pedagogically effective use of modern technology in schools takes place when pupils, for example, create and evaluate knowledge together in various kinds of groups. What I'm saying is that it's very good idea to, to learn these skills so uh, students are better able to use the technology also when they work in collaboration with each other. And then uh, we also know that um, work will become more fragmented, less centralized, based on short project. And we know that, uh, that uh, e-leadership will become more common in the future. And we know that there is a need for, uh, for competencies, like collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and problem solving. And we also uh, need uh, our, you know, uh, today, tomorrow's uh, students to be socially and culturally aware. And they, we want them to be curious and, and we want them to be able to adapt all these skills. But the problem is that we are not sure if uh, teachers really can teach those skills. Because what we, what we uh, found out was that, um, that uh, not all teachers are really good or they are not necessarily very competent in social and emotional learning without any training. But we also know, based on our research, that they benefit from training on social and emotional learning in many ways. So they, they learn the basic knowledge and skills, and they also know how to teach those things to, to their students. And when we, uh, when we uh, study social and emotional learning, uh, 
students experience autonomy, agency, and affiliation in, in a pleasant way. Yeah. So thank you so much for my uh, for for your interest. Thank you very very much. Uh... Markus for the information uh, and while while my uh, the slides are coming I ha have to say that I probably have one of the best uh, occupations in the whole world every now and then from time to time uh, I, I am uh, able to participate and host uh, these type of seminars and this is really what we or at least I am calling a, a continuous learning or lifelong learning. This is incredibly good information for me and I could easily uh, say that to all of our participants also. And uh, while Kimmo is actually uh, now uh, preparing to give a few minutes uh, introduction to HY plus let me approach to all of you, dear professors. There are a lot of very good uh, greetings on the chat and messages, and especially there are quite uh, interesting and nice uh, questions to all of you based on your uh, presentation and messages. I understand that you have not followed the Q&A part, but guaranteed you will be positively surprised when you read those people have really listened. So thank you, uh, Markus, Jari and Kirsti. And now it's just need to get my slide moving. Uh, please, Kimmo, if you could uh, shortly uh, introduce HY+. Uh, and then, I mean, in the end, your uh, contact information also. Yeah, thank you, Johan. Thank you, everybody, for joining this, this webinar. And thank you for World Didact to, to get us on board and also to our keynote speaker. So I want to just briefly explain what is H1 Plus all about and which kind of services we, we, we are offering around the world. So basically, H1 Plus is 100% is owned by University of Helsinki. So what, what we are kind of doing is that we are, we are offering uh, services which, for example, our keynote speakers today were explaining. I, I will just briefly tell them to you and, and you will get all these materials as well. So we are, for example, doing the reformation projects for countrywide implementations. Like currently we are doing that in Ukraine, in Europe, but we have done it also in Asia and Latin America for kind of countrywide uh, reform projects or, or optimizing education system projects. Also, what we are doing is that we are consulting the, the principals and leadership for school development and, and also the competence development. So whenever teachers they need, uh, for example, to, to have the pedagogical training or, or similar, what we can offer is, is to kind of the full service package. It can be it can be face to face when it's available and when we don't have this kind of pandemia on board. But now we can do it also through webinars and online online models. So everything is available at, at right this moment. So also as, as Professor Kirsti Longa was explaining, we have plenty of online programs available. So for example, phenomenon-based learning uh, packages or engaging student learning packages. If you are interested in these, please, please contact us on, on these online programs. So we have both the self-study models, but also then like webinars and interactive sessions where you can also interact uh, uh, with, with team members and also the, the actual professor or, or uh, expert who is explaining things. Also, we have this uni visit concept, which means the kind of uh, uh, coming to, to Finland. And now it's, of course, uh, coming is not so easy. So we are, we are now planning to do it also virtually. So we have this virtual uni visit uh, uh, product available as well. But as you can see, whatever kind of problems or challenges or issues you have on board, please contact us to, to, and, and let's discuss about how we can, how we can solve your, your things in, in your country or, or your school. So please, Juha, if you can get to the next slide. And here you can see our contact details. On, on right-hand side, the company contact details, HY Plus, 
and my personal contact details on, on left hand side. So if you want to touch base, please call me or email me like kimo.karpio at helsinki.fi. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kimmo. And as uh, already informed uh, you all, you will get all these um, materials afterwards, and that will include also Kimmo's contact information and so forth. Uh, we are coming uh, to the end. Uh, we still have a very few minutes to go, and I would like still to encourage our professor, if you would have, I mean, a few minutes to at least to read through a few of those Q&A questions. There are a lot of extremely interesting uh, approaches and thoughts around there. But to end, uh, kind of, I mean, uh, still a few, we all, uh, Kirsti, Jari, Markus, Kimmo and myself uh, from uh, H5 Plus University of Helsinki and World Didac. We sincerely thank you for joining us today. And as said uh, in the beginning uh, of this session, uh, this has been and will be recorded and it will be uh, uploaded uh, afterwards on YouTube. So you will have a chance uh, to listen once again the keynotes uh, together with the actual uh, material, presentation material. Uh, to end this session, uh, I still would like to uh, draw your attention on one thing, uh, because normally uh, there is and should be uh, more kind of hunger for more information. And one of the uh, uh, next uh, major events on the education, uh, when it comes uh, specifically in the, uh, the new era of the new normal, will be taking place on 4th and 6th of November this year uh, in a uh, hybrid uh, event, what we call Future Talk. And in the material that you will reserve, uh, get afterwards, you will have the... Uh, website link, but you can already now probably uh, write it down, the futuretalk.org and go through what is Future Talk all about. Uh, my per personal message is that if you are still eager, as we hope, sincerely uh, to learn even more about the uh, various part of the education and so forth, please join uh, us on the Future Talk event. All the uh, necessary information you will get from uh, the Future Talk website. Uh, and this is the uh, last slide of this webinar session. So we all thank you uh, sincerely from the bottom of our heart that you have uh, joined us today. Uh, and as we have a couple of minutes, I would like still to uh, at least ask from our professors, if you would have kind of a one thing, one thing only, kind of a top of mind, uh, kind of advice or hint or experience or whatever to all our uh, participants, what would that uh, one thing be? And let's start from the uh, kind of a counterclockwise, surprisingly. So, Markus, please, what would be your one top of mind for uh, the audience uh, today? Thank you. Um, I think the one thing that I would emphasize is that please use time on, uh, on social interaction and letting people to know each other and, and uh, mingling and things like that. Because once people feel they are safe, surrounded uh, uh, in, um, in, in the team or in the classroom, they are much more productive. So that's this, even though you feel that it, it takes time, but actually you save a lot of time once people feel they are safe. Now I cannot hear you, Juha.
Thank you. Now you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I was so focused on listening to your one point. So, Jari, your one hey. top of mind. What does that be? I, I think, yeah, okay. I think I already mentioned one of the most important. So, recognize the challenges and then use creativity for overcoming the challenges. And then you need collaboration and looking for consensus and, and, and then implement the idea, try it and make another trial. That's my guide. And then last, but absolutely not least, Kirsti, your one top of mind uh, takeaway for the audience today. Well, uh, I would say that uh, it's kind of Copernican revolution in, in teaching practices is to change the focus from how good am I teaching into how well my students are learning, what are they experiencing, can I engage them, and putting the focus on, on the students and their, their learning rather than going through vast amounts of information and not being sure if they never got uh, anything out of it. So I, I think it's very important to focus on the thinking skills and, and learning how to learn and also as part of it is, is this um, social and emotional learning to create such an atmosphere that people dare to ask and wonder and be even critical and, and build knowledge together. And usually when you put the student in the focus, they start collaborating with each other as well. I fully agree. And it, it is always extremely nice to be the host of these webinars because I normally, normally get the last word. So my one kind of a bullet point would be uh, because the challenging times, what we all are living at the moment, not being uh, able to meet us uh, uh, in the same manner that we uh, used to do uh, before the uh, pandemic, let us do our utmost to uh, stay connected all over the whole planet and sharing our experiences and challenges and we absolutely can uh, address these challenges uh, together. That's the only way. Now we just uh, capitalize on the technology and digitalization, what we have been at least thinking and even talking about for decades. But now it's the walk to talk to make it happen, actually. Thank you all for this uh, webinar, time well spent. Uh, it is uh, at least uh, based on my own watch, it is four o'clock. So we just managed to do this in one hour. Thank you, uh, stay safe, uh, and most likely and hopefully we will uh, meet virtually each other uh, in due time. Thank you all for participation.